The following program is intended for mature audiences. Wound after dark. I'm Dr. Dan. And that's producer Todd. Todd, how are you, sir? Why Dr. Dan? I'm just curious. <laughs> love line. I was a love line kid. You're in California. You had to grow up on Love Line. Well, yeah, maybe not grow up, but Yeah, I'm, I'm poor man era before Corolla. Oh, you go way back. Okay. Yeah. Mostly Corolla for me. I'm not sure exactly when he when it switched over but but uh yeah that was a that was a corolla guy uh shout out any love for love line in the chat i love it i miss love line very very much uh so guys first off we want to thank you our body chemistry after dark show is doing insanely well so we have heard you and you will be getting a lot more erotic thrillers and other things uh, as well, under the After Dark banner. Uh, so, so, tonight, we are tackling Indecent Behavior. The Indecent Behavior Trilogy. Now, a little confusing, because there's something listed as a fourth film, I believe, that's not an official sequel. It's not connected. Um, we will be covering that later. Um, and that's a little confusing, but we'll... Com- we'll We'll go over all of that when we get to that show. But this is the original Indecent Behavior trilogy. Yeah, the Human human Desires was the one that got retitled to the fourth one, Unconnected. Yeah, yeah. So officially, there's only three. So there you go. But you might have seen the fourth one, depending where you are, what region you're in. And uh, And the fourth one is being released in the U.S. as... uh, it's going to be released in the U.S. again as the fourth one. So, Ooh, I have uh, I have a little bit of news on that. Apparently, there's a lot more coming. I think uh, apparently MVD bought outright a lot of these movies, a lot more than has been announced already. So you awesome. might be getting quite a bit more. I don't know what. I don't have specific titles. If I f- kind of figure that out i don't know what's i'm gonna like. guess the non-corman stuff though i uh, yeah be... it well so far that appears to be the case so. well shout owns the that yeah. library outright too so i'd like to see shout move their asses and give us some website exclusives i mean again look at look at our well, they gave us the one show guys they did the woman's trip to kill the re-release i can't remember what the other one was with it uh, Final Judgment, the uh, yeah. Brad Dorif movie. Yeah, that's true. Strip to Kill, I feel, is like a, a movie that even if you're not into erotic thrillers, it's generally well respected, which a lot of these movies, quite frankly, aren't. But uh, <laughs> but uh, if you grew up with them, you love them, you miss them. Not totally dead, but you know we don't get them very often uh, anymore. Uh, but with that being said, Indecent Behavior, we kick it off. The first film from 1993 and director Lawrence Alenoff follows Rebe- Dr. Rebecca Mathis is a sex therapist. When one of her patients is found dead, at first it's presumed he died of a heart attack, but was it murder? The detective investigating the murder falls for Rebecca, but is he now in danger himself? All right, so these, uh, some crossover from Body Chemistry, these star, all, well, all three of these star Shannon Tweed, uh, which uh, we all love us some Shannon Tweed, as we said on the last show. It's, it was always <clears throat> amazing to us being with Gene Simmons, one of the biggest rock stars of all time, that she was making, like, a lot of these titty flicks for lack of a better term uh really really wild but you know what she was always good shannon tweed you know say what you will about maybe movies she was in but shannon tweed's not a garbage actress in my opinion she can actually you know 
emote. She, she's she's a decent actress. I don't think she ever really got a chance to show it too often, but uh, but you know these are plot based, so she has her moments. So also this director did a lot of Playboy TV, uh, Passion Cove, uh, late night old school. HBO late night Skinamax fans remember Passion Cove. Um, he also did one movie, kind of forgotten about, but impressive with the cast. And it's a 1995, I guess, kind of erotic horror film called Temptress, which had Kim Delaney, D. Wallace, Chris Sarandon, uh, Corbin Burnson, Ben Cross, Jessica Walter. Big mm. guest. Actually, something that I think we might cover here sometime because I think that's, uh, you know, something that isn't really talked about as much. And uh, I kind of vaguely remember it, and I don't remember what I even thought. So I feel like watching it for the first time. Uh, and of course, Shannon Tweed, the some would say maybe the queen of these movies. It's, it's hard, to, hard to argue it. <laughs> yeah, she definitely has the distinction of being in some of the, the bigger ones where they still kind of spent money and had stars, which you'll see here. If you're unfamiliar, it might surprise you particularly as we go on how many uh, stars were in these movies. Um, you know, star might be relative, but um, but certainly... You, hmm? you didn't say superstars, so that's okay. <laughs> Not superstars, okay. but stars like solid hands, Todd. Solid hands. Um, and also, guys, tonight got a little bit of a cold, so if my throat voice sounds off, yeah, there you go. It's not a Michael Douglas thing or anything, so no, <laughs> we know that much. <laughs> um, so speaking of stars, we have Mr. Airwolf himself, Jan Michael Vincent, in this movie, uh, playing, uh, Sleazeball kind of likes to uh, give off creepy vibes to his, his sort of niece, I guess, whatever we want to call her. Um, and uh, we have Gary Hudson as Nick Sharkey, always an underrated actor. I don't know if anybody remembers Gary Hudson, but um, I always thought he was a guy that probably could have had a bigger career than he did, but uh, just really didn't. Um, so the whole sex therapy storyline i think it's just kind of hilarious i don't know that that's necessarily a thing that you know we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna fix your problem by hiring what is essentially a hooker to fuck you <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm like i'm kind of like isn't this kind of like the the whole sort of like mondo concept or nudie cutie concept really is a better example where it's like well no no this is a documentary this isn't smart we're not making something for you to fap to uh, no I, I i thought the the whole idea of just like okay now we're gonna watch him fuck through a two-way mirror is uh pretty funny to me um uh, kind of a a goofy element to these movies Truth be told, you can smell the vodka on Jan Michael Smith's breath in this one. <laughs> that gets a little bit worse as you go deeper into the 90s. If you want to be depressed, you can look up some videos of Jan Michael Vincent and uh, recently. Um, but you may not want to. If you're an Airwolf fan, that might be kind of kind of sad. I never watched Airwolf much. You feel like that feels a little more your... It's my era, awesome. but I wasn't an Airwolf fan. Okay. <laughs> It didn't have the lunchbox. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I then, think there was definitely an Airwolf lunchbox. <laughs> Just well, that's cool. Just not with you. Um, so, yeah, this one, as we go deeper into the 90s, the, some of these, because you got to remember, this is 93, so it is full bore. Erotic thrillers are full bore. They are everywhere. Uh, started churning them out after Fatal Attraction, but at this point, We've had another massive Hollywood hit in when, with Basic Instinct. So we just started to get a whole bunch of them. Um, and, and, uh, and the formula that really became the staple of the erotic thriller was post Basic Instinct. Yes, yes. Um, now, as you go deeper into the 90s, budgets start to shrink a little bit. You don't have the, the bigger names 
anymore. We were still kind of uh, at this point, I think a lot of actors, you know, weren't a list at that point, but could still sort of justify it as serious film work. Um, and I don't disagree because we love these films here. So, um, so this one's, this one's pretty crazy. I mean, we have a, uh, designer orgasm drug that's killing people and that kind of ties into the plot. We've got Jan Michael Vincent, who I don't know if he even knew where he was, but uh, <laughs> playing the the creepy kind of uncle character. And uh, yeah, this one's good. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's not my favorite of the three, but I kind of enjoy erotic thrillers. Once again, just as a recap, it's softcore meets melodrama, murder mystery. Um, that's essentially what you're looking at here. If you didn't grow up with it, there's probably only one movie that I might recommend for you tonight that I think you still might like. The, this one, I'm not so sure. I don't know if I would pitch this beyond just wanting to see a very sexy Shannon Tweed uh, naked, which no shame there. I don't know if there's going to be as much for you. Um, but having said that, um, I still think these movies are a lot of fun. Uh, this one is paced pretty well. I don't think you're going to be looking at your uh, at your watch at, at any point. They, they're pretty breezy, fun movies. And I do think, uh, like I said, one of these, which we'll get to, I think kind of rises above and might be one I'd even recommend to the people I wouldn't necessarily recommend these to. I also wanted to point out video store staple. The director also made the Carmen Electra. I believe it was kind of a superhero movie chosen one legend of the Raven. I don't know if anybody remembers uh, that sure. one. Uh, Tra kind of trauma put that one out. I was about to say trauma did put it out. I Maybe in the, was it a second release that they got that, or was that the initial release? I, from what from what I remember, it was the initial. Okay, uh, but yeah, this this director's fairly prolific. Like I said, tons of Playboy TV. Um, Jan Michael Vincent, you know, it, it, he is what he is. But I thought Gary Hudson was really strong. I thought Shannon Tweed's acting, as always, was was really strong. And I had a lot of fun with this one. How about you, Todd? Yeah, um, I'm I'm with you on this one. Um, I think we're going to agree a lot on the erotic thrillers. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it, it's fun. It's a throwback to this era. And while I don't better think written than normal, I think you would say. Yeah, I don't think it's my favorite Shannon Tweed film or my uh, favorite erotic thriller. And I get what you mean. Out of the three, this would probably not be the one for a first time or you'd throw out there. Yeah. Your so, favorite is, of course, Shadow Warriors 1 or 2 with Hulk Hogan. Uh, uh, or no. Assault on Death Mountain. Well, that one is actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. So, no, okay. All right, well, no contest, face the evil. There's a lot of options with Shannon Tweed. Um, the, the Die Hard knockoffs she did, I thought, were pretty good. Um, so. Anyways, this could still kind of tie into After Dark, maybe. Uh, so, yeah. Well, if um, we Skyscraper couldn't, you know, if that qualified for After Dark. <laughs> that definitely did. I like, I mean, imagine, yeah, I was like, you got a die hard scenario, but you still have time for multiple shower scenes. You know, <laughs> yeah, you, you've got Alan Rickman just like taking over the building, but you know what? John McClane's got a loop of his balls. You know, it's got to happen. He's got to be squeaky clean. We got to connect a skyscraper to some holiday and torture Ozzy with it. <laughs> we, we, oh, dude, diehard knockoffs. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. All right. I, it's going to happen. Back to uh, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this one I, I do recommend. I think it's a pretty strong uh, movie. You know, made me laugh. It's it's not like a, a cheese ball flick or anything. You know, you may or may not guess who done it, but it's fun. There's a lot of eye candy and uh I enjoy this one. I enjoy this one. It's not elite level, but it is way better made than I would say most uh the golden era erotic thrillers. Uh so 
Can't remember. Do we rate these or we just kind of? No, we, we we have. I... What say you, Todd? Um, on this one, I'm a I'm a three. I do like this one, and I think it's worth checking out if you're a fan of the genre. Absolutely. Again, time to remind you that we do great on a curve. So if we ever like just drop that five bomb on some soft course smut, you know it'll that... happen eventually. <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We haven't dived into to Nikki Fritz or Kira Reed or. Or, you know, there's there's a lot of places we haven't gone yet. But, uh, yeah, there's going to be some vibes dropped. Um, I'm a three and a half. I like okay. this one a lot. Well worth checking out. And, guys, again, I, I hope somebody will put these out. I will take a DVD. I will take a quality DVD uh, upgrade of some of these. It doesn't even have to be Blu-ray, but. Some of these never made the jump to DVD, and that's really sad. So. Most of them. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Most. The, the Corman stuff is probably the stuff best represented on dis- a disc. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd have to look, but not even all of that. But, like, you know, Body Chemistry made DVD, but, man, those are in need of an upgrade, particularly yeah. those first couple. Um, the first Body Chemistry – I was like, man, that could use something new, yeah. um, new transfer. Uh, so moving on to 1994 and director, excuse me here, director Car. Sorry, my computer's being difficult. Director Carlo Gustav, and we have Indecent Behavior 2. Um, so these are, the, none of these are really directly connected. There is some actor crossover, but you can jump in anywhere uh and be fine you're not gonna miss anything so in this one reporter shoshana reed is about to expose a number of people who have a lot to lose unfortunately her cunning ways of getting stories by blackmailing people gets her killed the murderer could be anyone including sex therapist dr rebecca mathis obsessive convict daryl martine and successful impotent businessman tom mueller Who could be the cold-blooded killer? All right. So in this one, we do have uh, some some softcore royalty. Not a speaking role, but Nikki Fritz. Rest in peace, by the way. I was really sad to find out that she passed in uh, 2020. Uh, She was, in my opinion, one of the more visually just stunning actresses in in a lot of these films and uh well softcore and not specifically erotic thriller but the bear wench project and she did a lot of really fun stuff and i, f- I feel like i'm gonna have to hand you a box of tissues for another reason dan tearing up over there i can multitask todd i can multitask. all right i wasn't um, <laughs> just uh, you know we can do both um same time that's my fault i'm sorry Maybe it's more intense. You know what I mean? Have you ever? Has anybody uh, out there ever like busted Dan, move, while crying? Move, of course. I mean, I maybe. feel like it's a pur- a big purge. <laughs> no shame if you've ever busted while like crying your eyes out. Put it in the the comments there, and be sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, but anyways, um, so this one. Speaking of, well, for this type of movie, I would say a pretty big star, James Brolin is Liam O'Donnell, Dr. Rebecca Mathis's love interest in this one. Um, now, this is a couple years before Barb came into the, the picture, <laughs> maybe a few years. So, yeah, that's that's why he's dicking down Shannon Tweed. <laughs> no, wait, you, you mean <laughs> this wasn't once they were together? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because I wasn't too sure. I'm not exactly the biggest Barbara Streisand guy, so I was like, Man, I would think Barbara Streisand's got enough money to say, yeah, you're not going to dick down Shannon fucking Tweed in this Skinamax titty movie, James. So that's um, what you just got. So you think you're better than, than Gene Simmons? Yeah. <laughs> he said his old lady get dicked down. <laughs> it was funny, and it's wild to think. I mean, Shannon Tweed is 65 years old as of, the, as of this recording. But uh, James Brolin, even back then, looked like, 50 years older than her. It was a little, their, their sex scenes were a little strange to me, but, but Hey, 
I'm not complaining. Lucky bastard. We also get Chad McQueen, the McQueen that didn't quite make it is Daryl Martin. Um, not a, you know, he popped up in in several B movies that uh, Death Ring with Billy Drago, one that I like. That was kind of a gimmick one where it had like Aaron Nor Mike Norris and a lot of like brothers siblings of more famous actors uh that got put on blu-ray a couple years ago by code red uh so he's kind of has a little bit of a b-movie legacy he's been out of the game for about 20 years we also get rochelle swanson in this one who plays jordan she's been in a lot of stuff but as i said again nikki fritz as woman on the balcony um so she does have a, a steamy scene though so even though we don't get to see her talk you do get to see her in action you you can tell as you go along i think the the bump and grind gets a little bit more prominent in these they they slowly are becoming a little bit more explicit uh there there's i was surprised and i don't remember this but there was actually one scene not involving uh shannon tweed that uh has a well, for lack of a better term, beaver and beehole shot. Um, so it's a little more explicit. We'll just call it a B and B shot from now on. B and B. There you go. <laughs> Air B and B. Just you get that added. It's not what you think, but you're probably not going to complain. Um, so yeah, this one, I think Tweed really gets to flex her acting muscles. Uh, fairly well. I like when she first meets Daryl. He's just like holding a knife the entire time, even in like the office. <laughs> like there's, there were no consequences for that in the nineties. You could just wave a knife around. There was ninety four. There was bigger true. issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So lots of blackmail. Uh, yeah. These movies are, I, I think, still fairly safe to you know, sit down and watch with your girlfriend or your wife. They're not perverted or anything. They do have storylines. Um, again, and I, that's why it's important to s distinguish. We could call these soft core at this point, but they're still a little bit more than that. It's not, you know, every five minutes, but it sure starts to increase in terms of our, uh, sex scenes at this point. And, um, yeah, this one definitely gets more uh, more steamy, um, and it's it's got a pretty tense finale too. This one manages some suspense, I think, uh, with with everything as well. Um, Todd, what did you think of two? Um, yeah, I, again, another one. It, it's the it's the formula that with these that work because, like you said, you don't need to have seen the first one. This one is just a separate story. And uh, I agree with the Brolin stuff. I mean, he looks yeah. like 50 back when he's like 30. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you get to see Brolin's ass, ladies. So <laughs> you're wanted. You know. I have to pull out the I just, yeah, I think I pulled out the phone while I was like, I'm older than this guy right now. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Wait till you see who's in the third film un uncredited, because we're yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Another, another fun one. Um, mm -hmm. not my favorite of the three, but another fun one. Yeah. It's amazing how many of these, like, I, I feel like we might be broken records of positivity on a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll run into some that aren't very good. They're, they certainly exist. There's um, a couple SOV ones I haven't seen either. It's kind of hard to do erotic thriller, <laughs> you know, when it looks like shit, because there's certain details you want to I, see. I agree, know? but I'm, I'm very curious about the, the one I found. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got some uh, pretty wild, obscure stuff coming for you in, in 2023. Um, so this one more than satisfies on the skin quotient. Um, I think, again, it's a really good movie, whether you, you know who's... Uh, who's behind it all or not. And uh, yeah, I'm also, I'm also probably, yeah, I'm also a three and a half on this one. Yeah. This one I'm also a three on. So yeah, there you go. And uh, you get to see Shannon tweet suck on Mr. Streisand's uh, nips. in this. So. <laughs> and who doesn't want to see that? 
who doesn't want to see that? That's like that's somebody listening to this show right now. It's like, all right, I'm buying the Malaysian import. It's only $179.99. <laughs> I am that is a bargain, sir. And just boom. I don't know. We could Ben in it or Indy could be looking it up right now. <laughs> there you go. Indy, I expect you, if you're listening to this, I expect you to somewhere in China show us some shitty copy of indecent behavior too <laughs> just so, you gotta hit the stores and you gotta you gotta find that it'll probably be something ridiculous like a, it's like top top gun three or something something <laughs> insane to to make people buy it but yeah i want to i want to see that um so yeah that is indecent behavior too following it up 1995 we got one a year here we have indecent behavior three didn't bother like tacking anything on uh like the body chemistry uh films just keeping it simple this is from director um excuse me director kelly coffin and uh in this one it follows <clears throat> Sex therapist Re Rebecca Mathis returns in the third and final Indecent Behavior film, which is which has the good doctor getting arrested on falsified drug charges as she then reluctantly accepts a plea deal to be freed and have all the charges dropped in favor of aiding and investigating police detective Frank Pavin on his pursuit of a phantom serial killer who's stalking, who's stalking female sex therapists. All right. So this is the one I was alluding to. I, I think there are things about this movie that I could maybe even recommend it for those of you who are like, eh, erotic thriller, not really my thing. Um, so in this, we get Brian James, uncredited, uh, <laughs> which uh, might make sense, as, uh, as Andy Cowens. So Brian James has always played an amazing heavy in in yep. all sorts of things a pictures b pictures did a lot of cool stuff with pm entertainment brian james rest in peace that guy amazing um, great performance in house three house the horror three show the horror show yeah yeah dude like he he's one of those great character actors that i'll i'll give it a whirl if he was in it uh particularly in a featured yeah. role and um I kind of want to watch whether, Cash. <laughs> there you go. You can't go wrong. He was always yeah. memorable, even in a bad movie. Yeah. yeah. There were a lot of guys of that era I could say that about, but but definitely true with him. And so um, I couldn't remember. I thought maybe this was just like a really brief cameo, and that's why he was uncredited. It, it's not. Um, I mean, he doesn't have maybe a ton of screen time, but he he does pop up throughout the movie. And uh, he plays basically like a very uh, sadistic sadomasochist that is a client is uh, picking up these uh, using these uh, sex surrogates in exchange for getting clientele for our Dr. Rebecca Mathis. He's a real piece of shit. This opens up surprisingly graphic. <laughs> with Brian James. I feel like he just said yes to this movie to suck on some titties. Um, and <laughs> he didn't even know he was shooting a movie. <laughs> he didn't know. There was just, it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. There was some blow at this party. And before I knew it, the cameras were rolling and I was in indecent behavior three. That's my best Brian James. I'm sorry. Um, so it opens up with him sucking on this girl's uh, titties, kind of being kind of creepy. And, uh, when he tries to to burn, put out a cigarette on the girl's titties, of course she doesn't like it, and it, he drops the line, "I want you to feel it sizzle," uh, <laughs> which I want a Bryant James shirt that just says, "I want you to feel it sizzle." Uh, at this at this point, he follows that up when she freaks out by making the the sex therapist, not Doctor Rebecca, at this point, basically bang him because. Yeah, yeah. For his inconvenience, you know, she, she should know I was going to put a cigarette out on her titties. That's you know, is what it is. This one is definitely more graphic in terms of the uh, 
the spicy scenes. Um, uh, it opens up. This is pretty much all of these movies are, but there's a lot of like full nudity in this one. This is this is certainly getting more um, more spicy at this point. This uh, also features Griffin Drew, a name that will also pop up uh, through some of these After Dark shows we're doing. She's known for a lot of things, but just to name a few, uh, Dinosaur Island, Masseuse, Andromina, The Pleasure Planet, which sadly I believe Full Moon's DVD is edited on that one, but I always liked it. Bear Wench 2. Um, this director, also kind of prolific, uh, she, uh, did... Embrace the Darkness, which uh, was a softcore vampire trilogy. Later in the third film, featuring an early performance from Tiffany Shepes, uh, who, a Mr. Skin favorite, that has some of her spicier scenes, because that, that is a softcore movie, and Tiffany Shepes does a lot more than you probably would see her doing too much after that in, in horror movies. Um, she, uh, this director also did uh, Fast Lane to Malibu, Smooth Operator, uh, Bear Witness with Billy Baldwin and Angie Everhart was another one, uh, which that one I know is on DVD. Um, and yeah, so that's some of the, the people here. Uh, we get Sam Hennings as Frank the Cop in this. Really intense actor, um, quite good in this movie. Again, kind of rises above the quality that you would necessarily expect from this type of film. Uh, I like this one a lot. I think it's entertaining. It it has some, some really creepy uh, villains. I'm not saying who the killer is necessarily. You kind of have to figure that out yourself. And I, I do think this is probably one of the better written ones. You may, may not necessarily see everything coming in this. And uh, and this is also probably another one where Shannon Tweed, there's the subplot of her or her estranged dad dying. So she actually, in, in the middle of all of the, you know, bump and grind, she actually gets some decent acting moments as well. Uh, there's some good suspense. And uh, goddamn, Brian James plays an awesome piece of shit. <laughs> Rest in peace. You pro you're an awesome guy. I never got to meet you. Uh, definitely one of my big regrets. But, uh, yeah, I'm very high on this one, Todd. I think this is uh, a, a great erotic thriller. What did you think? Absolutely. Like, as soon as we get the, the Brian James stuff, I'm like, okay, this is my favorite of the three. It, I mean, <laughs> he may not have been the name of, like, the, the franchise, but he's definitely, like, the standout. Like, he outsh outshines a lot of the name yeah. uh, people that pop up. Yeah, that scene where he's like frisking Shannon Tweed, and at the end, <laughs> by the way, great tits. Like, so like, good. I was like, what the <laughs> fucking bastard? Yeah, ninety, you know, that was just him adding that shit. <laughs> oh, so good, yeah. This and definitely, I, I, I could also recommend this to some other people. <laughs> yeah, I think this is like a bunch of guys together, probably. You, you'll have a good time throwing this one on. I, I can't recommend this. If you're a viewer for like our horror content, I I don't know. I, I still might recommend this one. I think it's got a lot going on. The plot, it's a solid plot for this kind of movie. There's some twists you may not expect and um, some great acting, great villains. Like, man, uh, and tons and tons and tons of skin. What more could you want? So once again, I got to reiterate, these shows were not, if we drop big ratings. He's on going level, high, I can feel it. <laughs> we're, not, we're not saying that that puts it on level with the uh, Dawn of the Dead or The Exorcist or Black Sunday. You know, it's just it, it, within its subgenre might be a masterpiece. You go first, Todd. What do you think? Oh no, no. after that build up, you're gonna you're gonna take that one. <laughs> For what it is, I'm a five. Wow, a little higher than I Does it get much better than this for these movies? I think it's entertaining uh, as hell. It's got all the skin you could want. And again, I'm I'm not gonna reveal spoilers or anything yeah, on this, I, but I, I think there's this is well above in terms of acting and story. 
Yeah, I'm stuck at four and a half. I, I think there's just a little something like there's better ones. So basically, he needed to burn the nipples with the cigarette. That's what <laughs> pretty saying. much. Then it would have, yeah, easy fun. <laughs> there you go. He got close. He might have seen it a little bit. But but yeah, four and a half. Come on, that's a great rating. Yeah. <laughs> There's a brief shot too where I mean he's got his pants on, but he's like kind of starting to like dry hump, and I was like <laughs> laughing so so hard. Before yeah, I he... found my myself laughing out loud quite a bit during his stuff. <laughs> you you had some family cameos, didn't you? While you were trying to watch <laughs> yes. these, yeah, that's <laughs> every single movie. <laughs> Did you get like an, oh, I love Brian J. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it wasn't as awkward as to have it happen at like 15. Mom, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to watch Night Eyes 2 here. <laughs> it could be worse. There's probably worse stuff, though. I wouldn't even say softcore is the worst stuff that you, you know, could walk in on. It could be like the necromantic, like decap or something like there's there's probably worse stuff oh yeah i'm not but, yeah, way worse stuff <laughs> but people fucking yeah that is kind of strange because in the moment it's like they think you're watching porn well, which yeah. i might have been but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was worse last time when it was some sov gutter movie and it was just fucking people boning it yeah and it looked like porn i'm like this really isn't porn i swear <laughs> It's just a really cheap horror movie. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, guys. I, I'd say this is a pretty hearty recommendation. Well, we're going to have some shows where I'm sure it's like, yeah, this one, you know, not so great. Uh, but I think we've kicked it off with some some cool stuff so far. If there are things you want to see us do, please uh, post in the comments. Uh, chances are it's, it'll be coming at some point. No pun intended. Um, also, get on our Discord, our very active Discord, where you can communicate with us. Links are all in the description. Um, you enjoy us. I mean, hell, there's a lot of other people from the community that you may know in there. It's, it's a very fun, active Discord with a lot going on. Um, also, you can become a patron patron at patreon.com slash flesh wound features once again the link is is here you get a lot of bonus content uh we have our secret santa stuff starting up soon and uh if you're unfamiliar with that the first the selection show was on so we got to pick movies for each other some of us some were nice some were kind of uh not so nice depending how you look at it. i don't think any were not so nice there's one i picked for someone else that maybe made you uncomfortable, but that Not other you. one got the other one disappeared. Well, you got to watch to find out what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun show, so check that out. Um, on that note, yeah, guys, thank you for all the great feedback with these with these shows. There will be more. We'll also be doing some sex comedies. Um, we've got some, the return of some of our Jess Franco shows, which were popular for some of you long time, uh, listeners, pre YouTube listeners as well. We've got a lot of that coming and, uh, as always, Hey, communicate with us. You want something, let us know and we'll do our best at some point to fit it in. So Todd, on that note, good night. And, uh, don't. Don't don't put out cigarettes on boobs unless you get permission. That is what I'm leaving you with. Good night. Good yeah. evening. Oh yeah.